Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 52. Now, before we crack on with this week's episode, 52 means that we've been doing this now for one complete year. So I just want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you that, uh, that tunes in every single week, that has subscribed to the channel, and also those of you who have left comments, nice comments. It's things like that, the support from you guys that has really helped to motivate me to do everything for the last year and to go on building the channel. So again, thanks from me uh, but getting on with this week's uh, tutorial following on from last week episode 51 where I showed you how to create that uh, that watering hole using just layer masks and blend modes I had a few questions about how I created that kind of ripple effect within the water well that's what I want to show you in this week's episode it's very quick and very simple Okay, so this video kind of follows on from the last one, which was episode 51, where I showed you how to add in this uh, watering hole here, just basically using layer masks and the luminosity blend mode. So if you haven't seen that one, definitely go and check it out, because like I said, this one kind of leads on from that, because in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can create this kind of uh, water ripple effect here, where we've got our baby elephant dipping his uh, trunk into the water, where you would get that kind of wavy, ripply effect. So here's how we do it. Well, first of all, let's just turn off this uh, top layer here, this top group. Then we're gonna create a new document. Now this document we're gonna make roughly around about 800 by 600. Doesn't need to be the same size as the picture we're gonna add it into because obviously the ripple's gonna be really small. So we're gonna go for 800 by 600. I'll give the resolution to maybe around about 72 and the color profile, let's keep it all in sync here, Adobe RGB and click OK. So now I've got this plain white rectangular document in front of me. Now when it comes to adding the ripples, to give that effect, that dimension, that it looks like the water has got that ripple effect in it, all we're basically doing is adding in highlights, midtones, and shadows. And we're gonna do that using different tones of gray. So first of all then, the first thing we need to do is get a gradient. So we're gonna to go to our gradient tool over in the toolbar here. And when we choose the gradient, in the upper left-hand corner, whoops, in the upper left-hand corner, we get all these kind of tool options available to us. And I click on the gradient. Now, I've already said that we're gonna be adding in three different tones or shades of gray to give us that dimension. So what I'm gonna do is, we've got loads of different gradients we can choose from. I'm gonna choose one that has three already in it. Now, they're not the color I need just yet, but I'll just click on one that's got three in it. And I'm gonna click on this blue, yellow, and blue one. And you'll see in this bar at the bottom now, this is where those uh, Colors have been put in, this is what our gradient is going to be. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these blue ones first of all and drag them to the far left and far right. So we've got one on either side and one right in the middle. So let's just click on the one on the far left and then we can choose this little color little tab here and when I click on that, I can choose a color I want. Now, I've found out the best way that this works is by first of all choosing a fairly light gray for the one over on the far left. So we'll go for something around about there and click OK. Then the one in the middle is where we're gonna add the shadows. So we'll click on this little yellow tab. This is where we add one that's just a little bit darker. So we'll go for something around there like that. And the color I'm choosing is where it says new just here. And you'll see when I move that up and down, that changes. But we'll go for something around about this kind of darkness there. And the final one, the far right hand side, this one last blue little tab, click on that. Then we can click on the blue and then we're gonna choose an even brighter one. Now this isn't, this is the highlights but I'm not gonna take it to pure white. It's just gonna be an even brighter gray tone. So we'll go for somewhere around about there. So now we can see our gradient in the bottom bar going across here. When I've done that, I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna choose the kind of gradient I want. And again, up in the top left-hand corner here, we have loads of options available to us when we're using a tool. And when we're using a gradient, the first one is one that 
people tend to use the most, which is the linear gradient. But we're gonna make a ripple, which is a circular kind of um, uh, shape, if you like, and that's gonna help, we're gonna help to uh, do that by using the second one along, the second gradient, which is a radial gradient. If you hold your cursor over those, generally the name of what they are will pop up, and you can see there it says radial gradient. So now that's selected, put my cursor in the bottom left-hand corner of this document and drag across and up to the upper right and then let go. So now you can see that that gradient has been laid down on top of this document. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the sort of really interesting part now where we distort this to make it look like that ripple. So we're gonna do that by going to Filter, Distort, and the first one I'm gonna use to create that kind of like circular effect is this one here called Twirl. Now you'll see when you back out here, we can see this is basically in this dialog box here, this is the document that we've already created. And if I take it to zero, that is our gradient. And you'll see now when I take this angle slider all the way over to the right hand side, well the more I move it, the more it's twisting all those three colors that we laid down, those three tones of gray, it's twisting it into a circular effect. You can't see it in here until we click OK. So there it is, and already we're starting to see the beginnings of that ripple effect already taking place. Now, it doesn't have enough punch at the moment, so to really give it a bit more dimension, we're gonna go back to the filter menu, this time choose distort, and then zigzag. Now here, this is where the magic can be done because let's just move that over here. We've got a really interesting kind of mesh uh, dialogue here, which I don't tend to look at too much. We look at the main dialogue here, and they've got two sliders, a mount and ridges. And you can see when you play around with these, what effect that's having on our twirl that we've originally done. So I'm gonna bring this one, I, quite, I think it's quite high is gonna work with this. So I'm gonna take it into the high 90s, that looks pretty good. And we can play around with the ridges here when it kind of like zooms in if you like, but the more I increase this number, the more twirls I'm going to have. So I think somewhere around about, 15 looks good, I can just zoom out and see my whole document. Yeah, we can already see that ripple effect coming in there. In fact, also in this dialog box, we've got a drop down menu called Style. Around center, out from center, and then funnily enough, Pond Ripples, and exactly what we wanna do. So we're gonna choose that one, Pond Ripples, and this is the effect we get, and we click OK. So that, you could actually stop at this point, but I wanna add just a little bit more dimension to it. It's already looking good, but to really make it stand out and almost have that kind of 3D effect, so the ripples do look like that water's got that kind of rippling effect to it, I'm gonna go to the Select menu and just go to Color Range. And all I'm gonna do here is just, let's just choose, um, bring my cursor out, and I'm gonna click on one of the lighter, kind of midish gray colors within this swirl. I'll click on that, and that then selects it. Anything that's white now that we see in this dialog box is what I've selected. So when I click OK, you'll see all the marching ants now. So I'm gonna to go to Layer, New, and Layer via Copy. So those marching ants are gonna kind of like copy that part of the document and put it up onto its own layer. So this is what it's got. Now the reason I've done that is because now what I can do is go to the FX tab at the bottom of the Layers panel, or just double click to the right hand side of where it says layer one to bring up the layer style dialog box. And this is where we can choose bevel and emboss. And you'll see now already when I turn that before and after, if you look in the main dialog, look what it's doing to the actual image there. It's already kind of lifting up a little bit off the page there. So now we've got in this structure section here, we could play around with some of the settings. So let's just play around just to see what kind of effect we can increase. Don't want to go too high with that. We'll bring down the softening. I'll probably just go with something like that. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And again, we can turn that on and off. You can see the effect that's happening. Oh, that's doing. So we'll click OK. Now I don't need to keep both of these, so I'm just gonna merge this down just so we've got one document. I'm gonna get my move tool now, click inside the document area and drag it over the tab containing our original main image that we wanna put the ripple into, then let go and it drops it in like so. So now it's in there, but let's just kind of like reposition it now onto the pond. So I'm gonna to go to edit and free transform. 
I'm gonna hold down my Shift and Alt or Shift and Option keys, click in maybe the top left hand corner and drag inward so it all kind of like gets smaller all in the same proportions. So we'll go for something like that. And the way that we can now make that ripple look as if it's on the same angle of the water rather than looking like it's going straight up and down like it is at the moment. This again is from the last video, number 51. All we can do is fake that perspective by clicking <laughs> put my teeth in, by clicking on this uh, top middle pointer and dragging down. So although it's squashing it, it does give that fake impression that we've changed the perspective. So we'll go for something like that. In fact, I'm gonna put my cursor in the middle now, right click, and I actually get the option of perspective as well. When that comes up, any of these bottom left or bottom right handles, I'm gonna click and drag out. So that really does help with that perspective there, just to line up the ripple across the top of the water, something like that. In fact, let's just right click and just resize it just a little bit, make it just a tiny bit smaller and press enter. So I can now move it around wherever I want it to be. So what we're gonna do now is uh, use a blend mode to blend this ripple into the water. And this is the reason we, why we chose gray tones as opposed to trying to choose colors that match the water we wanna put into. When we use gray and then use blend modes, the ripples can be added into liquid of any color and it will blend in naturally. So I can play around now. I'm gonna go from normal blend mode to overlay. It looks a little bit contrasting. You can probably see now when we zoom in the change of the brown on the ripple compared to the water. So I don't really like using overlay for this. Uh, soft light is a lot better. Generally, all we're getting now are the ripples. So I'll leave it at that for now. Obviously, we've got all these straight angular lines all around it from our original rectangular document. So to get rid of those, all I need to do is add a white layer mask get a black brush, so my foreground color is black, a normal soft edge, zero hardness brush, and just come in and paint off nice and gently all those hard kind of lines going around the outside of our ripple. Now, just to help it really blend in, although the brush is small, the bigger the brush, the softer it's gonna sort of help and uh, help that kind of like transition to blend in. So we'll go for something like that. And now we can just use opacity to lower it down so that we do get that kind of ripple effect just there. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more punchy, you could always just duplicate what you've done and put those two of those layers now that contain the ripple into a group. So they're both highlighted and I'll go to new group from layers and we'll just call it ripple and then I can control the opacity on that group as well. So something like that. So let's just turn that before, after, before, after. And that's basically it. That's just how you can fake the look of having a ripple in the water. You could even take this just another step further by duplicating that entire group and then going to edit and free transform and then increasing the size of this even bigger now so you get those outer ripples where it's kind of really spreading across the water and just lower the opacity way down on those just so you've got traces of some ripples going further out. And of course, you'd mask it off anywhere that it's gone outside of the water. Water. But let's have a final look now. Let's have a look at the picture that I'm working on at the moment. That's this one here. Zoom out and you can see how that ripple effect is being used in the picture, which incidentally I need to change because these are Indian elephants and I've put them into an African background. So I'm gonna be changing this picture completely. But I thought it'd be worth showing you how we do the ripple, especially since I posted up on uh, Facebook and Google Plus and a few people asked how you did it. Well, that's how you go. Very quick, very easy. Okay, so if you want to kind of like follow along and do that particular tutorial yourself, because the best way of learning is actually doing it, make sure if you haven't already that you do check out episode 51, because in the description there, you're going to see a link that allows you to download the two files, both the field and the water that you can then go on to do the ripple effect. But make sure you actually do go through the tutorial of number 51 so that you learn how to put that water in there in the first place. You know, I'm a big believer in the fact that, you know, anybody can learn 
Photoshop techniques, but the real skill comes when you know how to combine them all to get one final result. So definitely, definitely check it out. But uh, I think that's probably all for this week. Again, a huge thanks, uh, like I said at the start, for everybody for tuning in for the last year. Please continue to spread the word, share the love, and let other people know about the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button. But that's all I've got for you for this week. I'll see you next time for episode 53. Thank you.